Greetings, sports fans, and welcome once more to the only Cal TV show that's getting drafted on day one. My name's Dan Fiedler. And I'm Daphne Pepinitas. And today we're going back. And forth. First off is Pigskin, with a great deal of the Cal football players headed to the NFL Draft on Saturday, and with spring practices already in session, Daphne, let's talk about the outlook for the Cal football team come this September. All right, Dan, so I think what I'm looking at next season for the Bears is maybe an eight or nine win season. Okay. I don't think we can take it to ten yet. No. It's definitely at least a partial rebuilding year. The quarterback situation to me is really up in the air. I feel like Tedford might become kind of stubborn, put te just put Longshore in there anyways. I don't, I mean, I don't think he should start. The receivers, totally inexperienced right. at this That's point. The big and in the past happy pack 10, that can be a really big problem. Right. I think that whoever starts at the quarterback position is going to earn it. I don't know why you say Longshore is probably man. going to be there. Tedford He's not is, practicing in the spring because of an do injury. Do you know why I say that, though? Because what? Tedford actually said... Longshore can do everything Riley can except roll out. How delusional do you have to be well, to actually think that? I Longshore mean, can't throw the same deep ball. Rolling out, scamper. rolling out is a pretty big thing, I right. think. Right, so, I mean, that's I mean, the problem. But the problem to me is that he seems to think that Longshore is just as good of a quarterback. It's just that one little thing that's well, not I mean, we don't really know how good of a quarterback Longshore is because of the injury and, you know, things yeah. like that. And what we talk about is 12 to 1 interception to turnover ratio, to touchdown yeah. ratio in the fourth quarter. But we haven't really had to play behind from the fourth quarter too often yeah. in the past two seasons. I think what the big problem is is the receiving core. We've got everybody and his mother gone, yeah. pretty much. Uh, I, we have Nyan Boateng. He's had some character issues in the past, so I don't yeah. know about that. But seriously, I'm thinking seven, possibly eight if we get to a bowl game and have some good luck. But other than that, it's just sort of rebuilding for the Bears. Now on to men's gymnastics. Tim McNeil repeated as NCAA champion on pommel horse and parallel bars this past weekend, bringing his individual total to five, the most in Cal history. McNeil didn't score career bests on either, but he did dominate the competition, winning by .65 on pommel and .7 on parallel bars. So, Danny, what does this tell us about Tim McNeil? Okay, Daphne, I think what we're seeing right here is a case of dominance in a sport. And I know we've talked about with rugby and with Memphis, uh, their undefeated season towards the beginning. To dominate completely in a sport and be perfect is an incredibly hard thing to do. But Tim McNeil has shown that it is definitely possible. Yeah. I, I just think that, you know, to have these many, this many um, championships, uh, a Cal record, we're talking about possibly one of the greatest gymnastics players of all time. Oh, yeah, no, and what the interesting thing about it is that he was actually kind of slightly injured for a minute there towards the beginning of the season. He was having some trouble, and yet he managed to come back, win two right. more NCAA championships, and th those margins, 650 and .7, That's I quite mean, a bit in the world of gymnastics, it's and the important ridiculous. thing... It's ridiculous. That's unheard of. Right. The important thing is that these are not his career bests. So we've seen that even though he doesn't have to bring his A game, per se, he can still blow everybody out of the water. It's truly remarkable, and something that's really not seen very often at all in sports. Let's move on to the NFL. Ten Golden Bears are up for drafting on this Saturday, and they include several household names, such as Deshaun Jackson, Justin Forsett, and Thomas Decoud. So, Daphne, what do you think the chances are of some of the more prominent Bears going, and where do you think they'll go? Okay, Dan, so let's start with the big one. Deshaun Jackson, right. he's basically in a weak receiving class, so he probably should go in the late first round, but really that's the only reason. He's completely okay. undersized. He's like at a buck 60 or something. Right, I mean, but I think his I explosiveness think, makes up for that. You, uh, know? you know, that's what everybody said about Reggie Bush, too. Okay, here's well, what I'll say. Okay, hold well, on, hold on a second. No, 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 okay, just listen. I think that Lavelle Hawkins will be a much better pro receiver, okay? He's got a lot more size. He's performed a lot better in games consistently. Deshaun was Mr. ABC. I only play on national television. He is consistently, but you got to think about about the coverage that Deshaun pulls from every team. Everybody you can't beat knows. a double team, you're not a good receiver. Okay, well how many times did Lavelle Hawkins have to beat a double team? He's been lining up as a slot receiver for most of the time here. He's did not have an A-plus season until this time. He's 5'11", but he's not as explosive. Okay. He doesn't have nearly the speed well, as Deshaun. Lavelle is a mid-round pick, okay? But okay. one of the biggest reasons I'll, I like him I'll is because it. he's like is because he can go up against guys like Thomas Deku, right? He's now these are the kind of safeties you have in the NFL now. Bigger, more physical. Deku's probably gonna be about a third round pick as is Justin Forsett. These so. guys Justin damage. Forsett's gonna fall because you know he's kinda of undersized, about five eight, but you know, I mean he could probably split. You kinda of always say he's gonna split. He'll Forsett split I carries. think he can split some carries yeah. with some NFL banks. He's not quite big enough for a uh, a third down back or yeah. anything like that, but I think that he definitely has some marks to him. Uh, yeah. you know he's got some good explosiveness, some good speed and agility. Uh, just the size 
size issue is tough. He can't really be a workhorse, and he can't really be a third down back, so it's going to be a little tough. Well, that's all the time we have for today, and this is our last edition of Back and Forth for the semester. For Dan Fiedler, I'm Daphne Pepinitas. Come on back in the fall to get your download on What's Up in Cal Sports.